A very good evening and welcome to the 7 o'clock news live from Bahrain International with me, Danielle Deporto. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Tunisian President Beji Khaled Sebsi on his country's Independence Day. In the cable, His Majesty the King expressed wishes of good health and well-being to the Tunisian President. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to Tunisian President Beji Khaled Sebsi on his country's Independence Day, wishing him lasting good health and the Tunisian people more development and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister sent a similar congratulatory cable to Tunisia's Prime Minister, Youssef Al Chahed, on this national occasion. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister received today at Gudibia Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Their Royal Highnesses reviewed the latest regional and international developments, affirming the importance of uniting Arab stances and developing bilateral and multilateral cooperation. They hailed the Kingdom's readiness to face various challenges, urging continued preparations to ensure a high level of government services for all citizens, despite any challenges. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince invited His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the wedding of his son, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness Prime Minister thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, wishing His Highness Sheikh Mohammed a happy marriage. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, today held at Gudibia Palace the weekly cabinet meeting in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Prime Minister commended the positive outcomes of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visit to the United Arab Emirates and the discussions he held with Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE's Armed Forces, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. He noted the visit's role in enhancing the strategic relations between the two brotherly countries, as well as enhancing cooperation in all fields to support bilateral ties and joint Gulf action. The Prime Minister hailed the existing solid ties, affirming keenness to develop them in all fields. His Royal Highness also congratulated the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the success of his Asian tour. He highlighted that the results of the tour will undoubtedly have positive effects on Gulf Cooperation Council. He hailed the Arab, Islamic and global role Saudi Arabia plays in defending the causes of Arabs and Muslims under the leadership of the Saudi monarch. The Premier then praised the launch of the global award of Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council of Women, Princess Abicha bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, for women's empowerment, saying that it reflects the extensive efforts of the Kingdom in this respect. He noted the global appreciation of the Bahraini model in this field. The Cabinet welcomed the stance of the U.S. administration in support of the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain to combat terrorism. 
The Cabinet also expressed thanks and appreciation to the friendly countries that supported the truth and credibility of the human rights reality in Bahrain against all false allegations raised against the Kingdom in this regard. The Cabinet approved the establishment of a system to create an award for the creativity and quality of government work, which will be added to the awards and initiatives adopted by the government. The aim of the award is to create a competitive environment amongst ministries and governmental authorities to enhance productivity and creativity. The Cabinet approved adopting a proposal presented by the Representatives' Council to extend the residence period granted to foreign women married to Bahraini men from two to five years, under the conditions that the marriage has exceeded five years, that the woman has Bahraini children, that she is living in Bahrain, and that the duration of residence is renewed for the same period. The Cabinet reviewed approving an agreement of extradition between Bahrain and Russia, which stipulates the procedural framework to extradite any person upon the request of either country to carry out judicial sentences in the context of extraditable offences. The Cabinet reviewed an agreement between the governments of Bahrain and the People's Republic of Korea regarding air services between and beyond their territories. The Cabinet reviewed a number of proposals regarding the appointment of commercial attachés at embassies and investment in governmental real estate abroad. It approved the government's draft prepared by the Ministerial Committee of Legal Affairs. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Tunisian President, Beji Khaled Sebsi, on his country's Independence Day, wishing him lasting good health and the Tunisian people further development and progress. The Representatives' Council Speaker, Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mullah, participated in the 24th Conference of the Arab Interparliamentary Union, held in the Moroccan capital, Rabat, led by the Speaker of the Moroccan Council of Representatives, Habib al Malki, and with the participation of the Chairman of the Council of Advisors in the Kingdom of Morocco, Abdul Hakim bin Shamas, as well as heads of the Arab Councils and Parliaments. Al Mullah delivered a speech in which he affirmed that reinforcing Arabic parliamentary relations and unifying positions on strategic issues and enabling parliaments to integrate people's perspectives in joint Arab action system has become a priority, especially during the attempt of the Iranian regime's blatant interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries and occupying three United Arab Emirates or UAE islands, which violates the rules of international law and the principles of good neighborliness and sovereignty. Al Mullah added that terrorism poses a threat to everyone and is not affiliated with any religion. He stated that the current circumstances imposed on Arab countries by foreign interventions that support terrorism require further supporting Arab and international efforts that ensure security and stability. He said that coordinating the Arab parliamentary stances in regional and international events has become a national responsibility. Amola affirmed the importance of reinforcing the diplomatic role of Arab parliaments to face all challenges and developments. He also noted the importance of supporting economic development and the participation of people in the political process. The Representatives' Council Speaker has been elected as the conference deputy president. Amola affirmed the importance of Arab cooperation, maintaining national security, adopting political initiatives to deal with internal challenges and rejecting external interference in Arab affairs. He also emphasized the significance of supporting sustainable development plans that adhere to the Arab countries and the necessity of Arab economic integration. He also highlighted the importance of supporting Arab women's empowerment for their significant role and to enhance their rights. He noted that the conference comes amidst escalating political developments and exceptional economic challenges that call for cooperation and integration and the necessity of activating parliamentary diplomacy. He praised the role of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz, along with his brothers, the leaders of the Arab countries, in combating terrorism and its supporters, noting the reformation achievements of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa al Khalifa. He affirmed the rights of the Palestinian people to live in a secure, independent state, calling for the world to halt Israel's daily violations of the United Nations resolutions and international conventions, which result in terrorism and extremism. The conference is to continue its meetings and discussions tomorrow and will issue a closing statement as well as recommendations on various issues including combating terrorism, supporting the Palestinian cause and the rejection of foreign interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries. Microsoft Bahrain and Tam Keen have partnered on the Forestry project to engender professional development by signing a memorandum of understanding yesterday. Hebda al Kafar was there and brings us this report. 
As part of its efforts to support Bahrainis across all stages of development, Temkin announced today a partnership with Microsoft Bahrain to provide vital technology training and certification for the kingdom's up-and-coming ICT leaders through the Forsati Initiative. Focusing on the ICT sector uh, because we believe uh, as a country that uh, uh, that is where the future is. And uh, today is just one example of hopefully many uh, in signing with big partners such as Microsoft um, uh, and work together with them to achieve uh, our national objective. I think the role of technology is very important to prepare our job seekers as well as, as our fresh grads to jobs that currently are evolving day by day with the digital transformation. The project aims at empowering Bahrain youth to meet the needs of national technology workforce in the private and public sector and encourage entrepreneurship by making them the employees of choice for semi-skilled and skilled professions. For businesses, Microsoft will provide mentoring services to enhance productivity and growth. This will help both um, startups as well as current enterprises in developing their businesses more rapidly. So I think this is a great relationship because I haven't seen in my experience such dedication by the local government and organizations like Tankim to be able to dedicate um, uh, skills development in the local uh, economy. An ambitious and very strategic partnership between Microsoft and Temkin to foster um, uh, local innovation and also increase the chances of uh, Bahraini youth uh, in terms of employability. The project is also aligned with Microsoft Bahrain's National Empowerment Plan, which is a roadmap for the company's contribution to the vision and its ambition to nurture entrepreneurial spirit and startup culture seen among Bahraini youth. Since today's young people are the voice, hands and brains of tomorrow, Tamkin and Microsoft partner in a great initiative designed to give Bahraini youth and businesses a competitive edge in the world stage. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffour. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Shogh Mohammed. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,374.23 points, marking a decrease of 2.97 points below previous closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks, investment and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 56.58% of total shares. 80 transactions included 2,203,017 shares worth 507,245 Bahraini dinars.